Ah, there we go. Now, a long time ago, I asked you guys what fan games you wanted to see next, besides FNAF. And you guys all said Undertale. Then three months passed. My bad. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time. I have looked through all the suggestions from the community tab, which I'll be using a lot more going into 2020, giving you updates on videos and also more suggestion calls. And now that I've sifted through dozens of suggestions, I think it's time to get determined and talk about Undertale fan games. Now these fan game videos take a lot of time to make since I have to play so many games. Which is why sometimes I need a little help to make these possible. And today I'm happy to say that today's video is brought to you by NOT Raid Shadow Legends. You may now sigh in relief because helping me bring this video to you guys today is Manscaped. Gentlemen, have you ever looked at your uh, um, lawn? Yeah, yeah, your lawn, we'll go with that. And gone, man, I need to get that under control. Well, you should, and the new Lawnmower 3.0 is here to help you do that. This year, I've been spending more time trying to make sure I'm taking better care of myself. And part of that is making sure that I'm grooming myself better. Well, that's where Manscaped comes in. The Lawnmower 3.0 is Manscaped's newest wireless waterproof trimmer specifically designed for your lawn maintenance. Please, I hope you get the metaphor by now. If you want to go the extra mile and treat yourself, you can pick up the perfect package that along with the Lawnmower 3.0 also includes includes the Crop Reviver and the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Deodorant. I mean, you put deodorant on your armpit, so why wouldn't you also use it down on the lawn? It also comes with anti-chafing underwear, which I can confirm are super comfy. I'm currently wearing them as I'm recording. They feel great. When you take care of yourself, not only do you feel better, but everyone can tell. It helps boost your confidence. Confidence that can help you ask out your crush or sweep your significant other off their feet. I started using the lawnmower and deodorant on my lawn. Not only am I providing better self-care for myself, Alyssa also appreciates it too. I'm not going to talk about your lawn. She, she meant lawn. So head on over to manscaped.com and use the code cyber20 to get 20% off free shipping plus two free gifts with your order or simply click the link down below now let's get to some fan games and stop talking about balls damn it i meant lawn god i was so close now there are a few things to note here before we get started just as fnaf fan games i couldn't play them all i played a lot but not all of them so if I missed your favorite, I'm sorry, that's really all I can say. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and maybe we'll check it out later. Second, a lot of you guys suggested games like Underfell, but there are a bunch of different versions of Underfell. So I tried to pick the most followed on Game Jolt. I think in the future, it'll be best to get links. Next, YouTube might not like a certain word referring to the path where you dust everything. I mean, the G word, it's a pretty terrible thing. So the G route will be referred to as the bad, bad, no good route. I mean, it totally ruins the gravity of it, but if YouTube wants plan, here we are. Thanks, Susan. Finally, a lot of these games talk about what happens at the end of Undertale. So if you haven't played the game, well, I doubt there's a lot of people that still haven't played it, but still, spoilers ahead. All right, let's start this video off with a fan fan game. Our first game takes the world of Undertale and Team Fortress 2 and throws it into a massive blender and puts that thing to puree. Overtime is Undertale, except with TF2 characters. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've never really played TF2. I'm very familiar with their character videos, but played the actual game, that's a no-go. So I gave it a shot for this video and the result was... as you would expect. 
The game begins as Miss Pauling travels out to the Badlands USA to take out the Man Brothers. Or she's fired. And then of course, one fall down a pit later and we're into gameplay. Overtime follows the same basic beats as Undertale with some slight adjustments. The Rowans is now a hospital, Flowey is now a unicorn who I'm sure you're going to hate me for not knowing the name, but what I like most about this is that it manages to combine the charm of both games into one. Like I said, it's not all one to one with Undertale. While the major beats are the same, Ruins to Snowden, etc, etc, there are fundamental differences in the battles and the story events. A great example of both is the Sniper Battle. The Sniper replaces the Royal Guard Doggo, but includes the projectile dodging from Undying. It's a very fitting battle both mechanically and story-wise. Overall, I had a really good time with this game despite not knowing much about TF2. Still similar enough to Undertale as a fan game, but different enough through the TF2 rework to feel like a standalone adventure. So if you're a fan of both, it is a must play. Oh, the combat is just like Undertale, you'll like it. One of the unique things about this batch of fan games is that half of them only contain a single fight. So let's jump in and highlight a few of the battle games I did play. First up is Undertale Red, and it might be my favorite battle-only fan game. The game takes place sometime after you befriend Undyne since she calls you after the battle and she seems rather friendly instead of, hey, I want to murder your face. This battle fan game puts you up against a Red Riding Hood type monster who turns out to be the most badass member of the Royal Guard. I mean the second most badass character, please, please put me down. Now the battle itself isn't too difficult to beat, but it has a unique spin to the battle as you would expect from a boss. Red has the ability to cut the bullet board in half, creating multiple boards that are cut off from each other. While the beginning cuts don't affect you that much, it progressively becomes more of a challenge if you find yourself on the wrong board. My favorite part though is the character itself. Red feels like she belongs in Undertale. The creator did a great job creating a character with motivation and a backstory for such a small game. I highly recommend this. The combat is just like Undertale, you'll like it. Let's move on to probably the hardest game I played. Sans. This game is like if every AU or alternate universe Sans got together for one mega Sans battle. Wait, that's exactly what it is. Ink Sans is a battle against an AU of Sans, as every other AU Sans tries to stop you from your constant bad, bad, no good runs. Like I said, this game is super hard. It's a Sans fight after all, but I think what makes this significantly harder is how chaotic it all feels. Every Sans attack brings in other Sans to throw an unbelievable amount of lasers, bones, saws, basically everything at you at once. If I have one criticism though, it's that the sound design is, is just a song. No sound effects whatsoever, and that kind of makes you feel a little disconnected from what's happening. Although, I think my ears do appreciate the lack of sound with the vast amount of things happening on screen, but still, it would have been nice to hear more than just a song. Overall, if you're looking for a crazy difficult battle, check out Ink Sands! And of course, you'll like the combat just like Undertale. Our next game, Undertale Disbelief, takes place in an AU where instead of destroying Papyrus, you end up finishing off Sans and Snowden. Without Sans to judge you, Papyrus takes up that responsibility. Undertale Disbelief is a battle with a more powerful Papyrus, but what makes this particular fan game so good is how faithful it still is to Papyrus's character. Papyrus doesn't battle you as some ultimate being. He battles you without hate or ill will. He just wants to teach you a lesson. It's heartbreaking as he tries to reason out why he's going all out. Currently, there's just a demo out, but I think it's worth noting this game is actually a playable version of a fan animation by the same creator. Flames at Games. I highly recommend this battle for not just the characters, but also for the hype music. Also, Undertale is just like combat, you'll like it. Our final battle fan game is Last Breath. This game opens up with a lot of dialogue. A lot of dialogue. Basically, after Gaster watches you run multiple bad, bad, no good routes, he tells Sans everything you've done. Knowing that he can't go easy on you, 
Sans goes all out during your fight, even more so than before. This battle is the Sans battle with a little more extra mega in the Lovania. Most of the attacks you remember from Sans battle have been readjusted and shuffled to dish out the maximum damage. There really isn't much more to say about this one, it's just a solid battle with multiple difficulties. Again, if you're looking for a more difficult Sans battle, there is plenty of bad time here. You'll just like the combat, Undertale like it. With the battle games out of the way, our next game is Dust Tale. Just like Last Breath, this features a Sans that has become aware of all of your bad bad no good routes. All 327 bad bad no good routes. That's a lot of dusting. Fearing that you'll continue, he decides in order to fight you, he himself must also up his LV. Which means he needs to, you know, dust other monsters, friends, loved ones. Oh no. This game is heartbreaking. While it was hard to do it yourself, watching Sans have to dust all of his friends and family to stop you, it's absolutely tragic. It's so sad to see Sans slowly lose his mind when he should be his cheerful self. As far as gameplay goes, this does give you the fun benefit of doing two Sans battles in one game, so you know. <laughs> It's a learning experience. This game was tragic and a great story to play. If you can manage to do a mini Sans battle followed by a big Sans battle, this one is a great dark AU to play. Undertale is just like you, combat like it. This next game is probably in my top three fan games of the video. It was a fantastic game that also created one of the most unique experiences I played. Don't forget. This fan game takes a bit more inspiration from Toby Fox's second game, Deltarune, putting you in a town of monsters with your brothers Azriel and Chara. Oh, oh, that can't be good. You play as a human child named Harlow, or whoever you name yourself as, who after having a strange dream manages to find the one and only Gaster. Gaster informs you that this world you live in is actually a fake reality, taking a page right out of Kingdom Hearts 2 there but without the three hour tutorial. From there, it's up to you to reunite Gaster's soul to escape the world. To do this, you'll need to do some tasks and find wormholes that contain soul pieces. The tasks aren't too exciting. A lot of them are fetch quests, but there is a side mission that requires you to play a full 2D Atari style Splatoon, which is neat. The wormholes, however, are the real main dish here. Each wormhole will require puzzle pieces you can find on the overworld, but once inside, you'll have to navigate glitch-filled mazes to find the soul pieces inside. From what I played, they don't get too difficult, but it is only the first chapter. There is slated to be at least two more chapters here in the future. One of the most unique parts of this game is the multiplayer. By logging into a Game Maker server, you can play with other humans trying to find the soul pieces, I think. To be honest, I booted it up to check it out, but not a single person was in my instance, so maybe we'll try to stream it sometime. This is one that I had to stop myself from playing to completion. It's really interesting, and there is a ton to explore in the world. I really hope that I can come back and finish the first chapter to unlock the costumes and other completionist tasks. Combat, you'll like it, Undertale just like. So one game that came up a lot when I asked for suggestions was Underfell. And as I said before, I don't think I grabbed the one you guys wanted me to play. Look, there was one from Primus Official, one from Team UF, some grander experience coming from Mania Knight. I took none of these and grabbed the one from VLG Games. And I can say, unironically, this is the Dark Souls of Undertale fan games. Okay, fine, I say that with at least some irony. Underfell takes place in an AU where the monsters are significantly more brutal to each other, acting like, well, monsters. Monsters you fight are super beefy, with a ton of health, and fighting is really your only option. Though Flowey is a bit more pro-frisk, which is nice. Okay, maybe it's not as nice as I hoped. This Underfell is an absolutely unforgiving game. With oddly placed checkpoints, it'll really challenge your endurance as you play. Traps tend to have a case of the RPG maker horror insta-deathitis, real thing, don't look it up. Make one wrong move on traps and it's game over. Back to the last checkpoint. Fights are just as brutal, not in an extreme difficulty way, but rather are rough endurance challenges. While bullets are easy to dodge at times, they hit very hard. Combine that with massive health pools and it only increases your chance of getting hit more. This version 
is not for the weak. I'm not sure how it stacks up against the other versions, so who knows? This could have been an easy one. Now y'all need to get together and make an official version. Y'all have the same basic idea. Now get together and make a mega game. You'll just like Undertale combat like it. Our next game was definitely one of the most interesting takes on the Undertale universe. Horror Tale tells the story of the human after a neutral run Frisk, Eliza. After Asgore's death, Toriel takes over as the Queen of the Underground. However, a furious Undyne mounts a coup to take over the throne herself. Her first order is Queen, all humans must be destroyed. Oh man, sucks to suck, small, sickly child. Oh, you're screwed now, I feel bad. In this AU, Toriel has become a hyper paranoid keeper of the ruins, laying to waste any monster that might come near a human. Flowey is an eye now. Not sure how that evolution happened, but if the Zora could become the Rito in Zelda, who am I to argue? This game is supposed to be more horror themed, but besides the setting and environment, you shouldn't expect too many scares, at least not in the demo. This is a bit more psychological horror, as Toriel's behavior is rather unsettling. Any monster she comes across, including Flowey, is immediately dusted by her. She has no trust, and it's unsettling to think what she might do if you ever try to leave. Horror Tale as a concept isn't new to the fan base. In fact, it is based off the Horror Tale comic series, which definitely becomes more darker and spoopier than we see here in the demo. But there is no doubt that once the full game comes out, you're definitely in for more of a spook fest. Now, let's talk about my absolute favorite game of the bunch. Departing from Frisk or any of the main cast, Undertale Yellow is the prequel following the exploits of Yellow Soul, Clover. Having heard of the missing humans on Mount Ebot, you set off to the underground to try to save them. When you arrive, you're greeted by Toriel, as usual, who begins to guide you through the ruins. However, as you try to solve your first puzzle, you fall through the floor and land in a new part of the ruins. That's one of the first aspects about this game that I love. Instead of exploring the same ruins like a lot of these games, you actually travel to a different area. Still with the same theme, but with an aesthetic twist as the ruins truly are in ruins. But what I think is most interesting about this is the area guardian boss guy. You know, like how Toriel is the ruins, Papyrus Snowden, etc, etc, you get it. In this area, you run into a mysterious cloaked stranger who has a habit of monologuing. He's a completely new character, but he winds up fitting perfectly with the rest of the Undertale cast. The mechanics of the game are basically identical to Undertale, though they do introduce advanced mechanics a little sooner like blue and orange attacks from Desabat, which is just objectively a fantastic name for a bat. Undertale Yellow just has such a unique polish to it that you don't really see in the other fan games besides Don't Forget. Characters' attacks are so beautifully animated, it's like adding a fresh coat of paint to Undertale. If you were to play any of these games today, I would highly encourage you to play Undertale Yellow. The polish, the characters, and the story feel so uniquely fresh compared to the other games. Combat Undertale like it. With that, we arrive at the end of our Undertale fan game adventure. A lot of alternate universes, but a ton of great and sometimes brutal experiences. You know, I think we have time for one more. Oh mighty gods of Game Jolt, what game shall you bring on to me? Come on, come on. Thank you everyone for watching. I know this was delayed quite a bit, but I'm glad to finally get this video out to you. A special thanks to Alyssa Be Crazy, Elizabeth Mello, and all my Patreon patrons. And a hearty thanks to Manscaped for making this video possible. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video comes out. And until next time, Cybered out.